Afternoon guys, so we are sat in a 2020 T6.1 uh, Transporter, it's a brand spanker, it's only done a few hundred miles. One of the many videos that we do that seems to be really popular is a how-to video. Now the T6.1 can come with two or three variants of what we're looking at. This is what we call the entry level um, touchscreen radio app connect system. There's no nav built in, it's just got your SD card, your two USB-C um, USB ports and then you've got your Bluetooth, your DAB, your music streaming and other bits and pieces like that. So what I was going to do is quickly show you how to get the trim off and how to remove the radio for whatever reason that you might want to. One of them might be that you want to upgrade it to an aftermarket system with a big floating screen or put something in there that's different or you might just want to do something to run some new cables to the back of the radio or maybe you're fitting a camera either genuine or non-genuine this is how you would need to get access to the radio so you're going to need a trim tool and you're also going to need a simple screwdriver you can get more uh, expensive tools in terms of getting the radio out because it doesn't use conventional keys uh, well you can use radio keys but the easiest way I find is to get it out now the same mechanism seen with the VW Passat and the Polo in terms of um, getting the radio dash out uh, but this is actually a radio screen so the first thing I'm going to do is just bring the steering wheel down and out because before you release the main fascia around the radio which is really well clipped in with lots of connectors you've got to remove the trim around the instrument cluster so um, Tim has already said about the camera or he might not have done but the camera's at a slight angle because this vehicle's got a conversion so it means it's a little bit difficult to have the camera dead on so you may not be able to see what I'm about to do but I'm going to work the uh, instrument cluster bit of trim off so using your trim tool um, don't worry about the loud cracking noises, uh, that's not me breaking stuff, that's me just removing the trim around the dashboard. Okay, so you have to be careful. If you are too light or too ginger or too nervous about doing this, then don't do it because you could do some damage but the clips behind these bits of trim are really well clipped in so as long as you're using a trim tool to do the job uh, there shouldn't really be an issue um, now I don't know what the camera lens can see because I'm sat in the front here but what I've done is using a trim tool I've prized off each corner here and I'm just going to work with trim tool into here again just be careful because you can do dim damage even if you have got a trim tool once you've removed that you don't actually need to move it you can just pop it to one side okay so once you've unclipped the main instrument cluster part you'll see the reason why you have to do this first because it is held in here by this little lug uh, and that little lug then clips it in holds it down you can see it flexing a little bit at the bottom if you can then you can just lift it up ever so slightly and get your trim tool in along the bottom it does make some horrible noises uh, but because I do this every day I probably make it look easy uh, and also um, because I know the tolerances of what can and can't be done in terms of the plastic. So I'm going to keep my hand underneath here, I'm going to keep lifting this bit to trim, and I'm going to clip all these little clips off here. That bit there is just released nicely. Now don't forget this dashboard has already been off today because we have fitted the reversing camera. So as you just get to this bit, this whole panel becomes, or gets rather loose. Uh, one more in there, sorry if you can't see too much, but I've got to be able to get in there to remove it. And then the last clip, like so. Now once we take that off, you can remove it. It's all in one piece. These are the reason why these clips are so difficult to get off. The reason why Volkswagen have done so many is because plastic expands, contracts over the heat, and it starts to squeak and vibrate. And that's the reason why they've done this, to get this a really nice, tight fit. Okay, so uh, excusing my head and long hair getting in the way, You've got clips here. Where I'm showing the screwdriver is you've got a clip here, clip here, and two underneath. What you need to do to get the radio out is you just need to pop your screwdriver in and move the clip to one side. It's on a spring. So in a second, I'll show you that so that you can see exactly what the clips do. I've released the first two at the top. 
Now I'm trying to do this and keep an eye or keep my head out the way of the camera as well. Okay, once you've done that, let's get those bottom ones there. It's a bit difficult when you're recording as well so that you don't want my big head in the way. That's the bottom one. So you just saw that side release. That's the top one out. And then last one. Okay, so. As you just release the radio, careful of the plastic bottom trim here. It does scratch easily. Not that we've done it, but I've done it before, so be careful. And the radio comes out on a little channel. And I'm just going to spin that round. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. There you go. These are your locating lugs. You've got to be careful here. And you can put your hand down and just pick up the rest of the cable. And you'll find, there you go, if I tip it up there, Tim will be able to show you the reason why you just use a simple screwdriver. You can use a radio release key, but the screwdriver goes in and just bends. Got that right, Tim? Mm -hmm. So screwdriver can go in there, and all you're doing is just using the screwdriver and releasing the clips on all four corners, and then the radio will come out like so. Part number's written on there, but just in case you want it. And when you put the radio back in, you just make sure it sits in the guides or the lines there, and pop it back in and clip it in and then putting it back on everything back in reverse simple enough to be you just put this panel back on this panel's got to go on first make sure that none of your clips have come loose or astray and then you can just pop it all back in now doesn't matter how many times you click just keep going around the fascia panel because there's always one that hasn't quite clipped in properly uh, and you don't want that to be rattling or vibrating now, I don't know if Tim can zoom in on this side here, um, but like the T6s, the instrument cluster has these little rubber grommets. If you don't check that they've either come off with the instrument cluster housing, uh, the, the fascia, when you go and put it back in, you're either going to miss it or you're going to snap them off. So grab them with your thumb and forefinger from the back of the instrument cluster, push them back on and again that stops any vibrations and rattles so line it back up he says okay once you've lined it back up just make sure it's all lined up before you push it home because otherwise you're going to have to take it all back off again so it's all lined up all the way around and you can just push home once you push home like so work your way all the way around the outside of the edge of the trim and just double check that you've done it once you've done that put your steering wheel back in its position and give it a wipe over with a cloth uh, to get rid of your fingerprints and that's how to remove the radio on a T6.1, it may differ from this, but as soon as we get um, the, the next level up, we'll do a video on how to remove that as well. Don't forget to subscribe. If you've got any questions, you want a reversing camera fitted or any other bits and pieces, get in touch with us. The website is www.advanced-incar.co.uk. Thanks for watching.